let's take a moment to discuss the life cycle stages of an adult somatic cell. But first, let's make sure we understand what a somatic cell is. The human body has somatic cells and sex cells. Somatic cells are all the cells that make up your body. And for that reason, they're often referred to as body cells. Somatic cells have a diploid number of chromosomes. If we look at the karyotype of the human genome, you'll see that it has 46 chromosomes, 23 what are called homologous pairs of chromosomes for a total of 46. And this is referred to as a diploid number of chromosomes. And you can refer also to somatic cells as being diploid cells. Somatic cells reproduce by mitosis. So a fertilized zygote, so when an egg and a sperm unite, you have the single cell called a, zy a zygote. And then through a process of uh, mitosis and cell division, that one cell reproduces into something around a trillion cells by uh, the time of birth. All of the cells making up the fetus have that 46 chromosomes, 23 pairs or diploid number. And then mitosis and cell division allows for the growth and maturation of that child to become adult, an adult. And by the time that child is adult, uh, it's estimated that um, there are about a quadrillion cells is what I read in the human body. And all of those cells have 46 chromosomes, 23 pairs, and are diploid, and all of those cells were formed through mitosis and cytokinesis, and all those cells are somatic cells. Let's contrast the somatic cells with the sex cells. Your sex cells are your gametes. If you are female, you have ovaries that produce ovum or oocytes, those are sex cells, and if you are male, you have testes that produce sperm. These sex cells have a haploid number of chromosomes, only 23, and when they unite during fertilization, they form a zygote, which then has 46 chromosomes. The gametes are formed by a process called meiosis, and you'll likely cover that in ANP2. Now that we have a understanding of what somatic cells are, let's talk about the life cycle stages of somatic cells. And I'm going to use this figure from your lab manual here on the left and this figure from your book showing the uh, life cycle of a cell on the right. So when a cell is in interphase, it is a quiescent cell. It's not dividing. It's growing. It might be preparing for division, but it's not dividing. At some point, that cell gets a chemical signal that, hey, it's time to divide. So it starts getting ready to divide and then eventually enters the mitotic phase, and then it becomes a dividing cell. And it's in the dividing it's a dividing cell until, well, it actually divides. And then the two new daughter cells, as they're called, uh, are then in the quiescent phase here at G1. Now, some cells have the ability to divide. Some cells don't. Some cells have the ability to divide, but rarely do. It just really depends on the cell. So the cell could become a dividing cell if it is uh, exposed to the right chemical signal. Some cells have the capacity to divide, but for whatever reason, when exposed to that chemical signal, they still do not divide. So some cells are permanently in the uh, this first subphase of interphase. And if that's the case, we refer to them as being in the G sub zero uh, phase rather than the G1, but they're still you know, essentially here. 
as cells age, they can lose their ability to uh, divide. So it's possible that at one point they had the ability to divide, but then lost that ability as they aged. Uh, could, uh, there could be some uh, damage to the DNA uh, where we actually don't want the cells to divide because damage to the DNA results in mutations that can cause the production of tumor cells and could potentially uh, lead to cancer. Uh, when we refer to cells that are uh, have lost the ability to divide due to aging as being senescent cells or in the senescence uh, stage. And those cells normally will self-destruct. They'll go through a process called apoptosis where they literally destroy themselves. And this may uh, sound like a negative uh, outcome, but actually is a positive outcome. You don't want cells that have damaged DNA to uh, reproduce, because as I mentioned, that can cause uh, the production of tumors and cancer. The cell cycle is divided into two major periods. The first interphase, shown in green in the figure on the right, by far represents the majority of a cell's life cycle. During interphase, the cell is growing and carrying out its usual activities and functions. The mitotic phase, shown in yellow, is the time during which the cell is actively engaged in dividing. Let's look more closely at these two periods, starting with interphase. Interphase is the portion of the cell cycle where the cell is not dividing. Often it is referred to as the resting phase, certainly when I I was in school, I was taught interphase is the resting phase. However, this is really a misnomer. The only thing the cell is resting from is cell division itself. The cell is growing, the cell is carrying out normal metabolism, so it's not really resting. Interphase itself is divided into three subphases, G1, followed by S, and then finally G2. The G1 subphase or GAP1 subphase directly follows the formation of a cell by mitosis. During this phase or subphase, the cell is very active metabolically. It's growing very quickly. This phase can last from minutes to hours to years, depending on the cell. During this time, the cell is not really preparing for cell division. In fact, cells that will never divide are said to be stuck in this phase. And if that is the case, they're actually said to be in the G0 phase. However, if, if a cell is going to go on to divide and get past this restriction point toward the end of this phase, the centrioles replicate centrioles shown here are organelles that later on you will see play a very critical role in mitosis and therefore cell division. Our cell in the G1 phase will continue to grow and will continue to be metabolically active and will get to this restriction point here where it will go no further in the cycle unless it is acted upon by a chemical messenger. If the cell receives a chemical signal, typically that chemical signal is in the form of a hormone, although it could be other chemical messengers as well, it will receive the message that it is time to prepare for cell division and it will move from the G1 subphase to the S or synthetic subphase. This subphase is all about the synthesis of new genetic material. 
if the cell is to divide and give rise to two new cells that are identical to the original cell, all of the genetic material must be copied or duplicated. That involves the replication of new DNA. Replication of DNA basically refers to the duplication of every chromosome. New histone proteins must also be produced because the new DNA will be wrapped around those new histone proteins in the assembly of new chromatin. After successful synthesis of new genetic material, the cell leaves the synthetic phase and moves into the gap two subphase. Here the cell is going to make final preparations for cell division. Enzymes that will be involved in cell division are synthesized and directed to the appropriate parts of the cell. Centriol replication is completed as well as the replication of other organelles such as the mitochondria. And lastly, there's a check to confirm that the DNA that has been replicated is undamaged. The cell is now ready to divide and move from interphase to the M or mitotic phase. 